I use uh, uh, what we like to call an infotaining approach. This is a concept I learned from my friend Ben Settle, who's also a mutual friend of mine and Andres as well. And uh, this approach allows you to mail every day and make the emails informative and ent entertaining at the same time. Hi, I'm James Taylor, business creativity and innovation keynote speaker. And this is The Creative Life, a show dedicated to you, the creative. If you're looking for motivation, inspiration, and advice while at home, at work, or on your daily commute, then this show is for you. Each episode brings you a successful creative, whether that's an author, musician, entrepreneur, performer, designer, or thought leader. They'll share with you their journey, their successes, their failures, their creative process, and much, much more. You'll find show notes for this episode, as well as free training on creativity, over at jamestaylor.me. Enjoy this episode. Hey there, it's James Taylor, and I'm delighted to have on the show today Igor Kefetz. Igor is the highest paid email marketer in the world. He specializes in helping people break the link between their time and their income using email marketing. Ten years ago, he started building his first email list from his bedroom. Since then, he's generated over 4 million email opt-in leads from himself and over 20 million leads for his client. He is the best-selling author of List Building Lifestyle, Confessions of an Email Millionaire. It's my great pleasure to have Igor with us today. So welcome, Igor. My pleasure being here. Thank you for hosting me. So share with everyone what's happening in your life just now. What are you up to? Well, uh, as you've just mentioned, we just published uh, our book, uh, which was a big thing. Uh, it took me a while. In fact, that was like probably one of the hardest things I've ever done um, because it's like years in the making. But obviously, from the moment you commit to it, like there's a very short span of like a, maybe a month or two before it actually becomes a book. But the emotional commitment was the hardest thing by far. And now we're really focused on our brand new uh, mentoring program where we actually teach people to go from no nothing, from an idea to having a thriving email marketing business selling information products. So tell me that you know, the, the role of an email marketer is obviously you get very skilled at copywriting, getting people to read onto that next line, that next paragraph. Uh, did you have to change your, your mindset when it came, comes to writing a book or did you use you know, a lot of that those kind of copywriting skills in writing in a, in a more traditional book form? You know, writing a book is completely different from writing emails, uh, especially marketing emails. And uh, there's, there's many schools of thought as far as how you write your emails. But when it came to the, to the book, uh, it came in two attempts. My first attempt was what I thought was like is, is going to turn into an amazing book. And I wrote like a how-to guide with very specific, do this, don't do that, go here, don't go there. You know, this is bad, this is good sort of uh, advice. And it was a 37,000 word manifesto taking people from the very early stages of, you know, wanting to build an email list or wanting to market things online and into building a business. But once I read it, I figured out, wait a second, this is nothing like all the best-selling books that I keep on my you know, bookshelf, the books that people talk about and they you know, recommend their friends and buy as gifts and stuff. So I went on like about a year, I just started reading other people's books, especially the ones that I really loved. Things like uh, Never Split the Difference, you know, um, a lot of that stuff. And I realized, oh wow, I really need to change the format. And I had to go back and redevelop the narrative and turn it into more of a story that flows from one lesson to the next rather than a very specific, hard teaching, dry advice. And that was the challenging part. Um, however, once I've had the outline done, it was really easy from there. The outline was definitely the hardest part. So that's kind of what we talk about doing the, the structural edit, like just going, getting that big, the big, the overview of not knowing, you know, what needs to follow when. Did you work with a team? Obviously, you have a team in terms of the other parts of your business. Did you work with a team specifically on the, the book writing process or moving into the book publishing and the, and the marketing process? Well, you know, this is, this is a funny story because the first, um, uh, the first attempt after I realized that I don't need to hard teach, but rather need to create a more of a story-like sequence of events. Uh, my first attempt was to pay somebody $10,000. I won't mention any names, but to pay them 10 grand to get a book out of me. And that ended in a, in a complete disaster. First, it took them eight months to get a manuscript back. 
uh, with uh, you know excuses such as my uh, you know my house got mugged and the hard drive with our interviews was on on the you know uh, was in the bag whatever that's been taken then you know my my ghostwriter quit on me then it's like my wife and I are getting divorced and she's the one who manages the project so it, it has become very complicated all of a sudden right so all kinds of excuses like that and um, at, at, at one point after I got the raw unedited manuscript back and I realized what a piece of crap that was I just fired that person and I attempted to write the book on my own. This time though, I had a, a good idea of what I don't want it to be. And I think in many ways, when it comes to creating something from scratch, where most people struggle is they struggle to, to commit to the version 1.0. That crappy, really bad, uh, really unsatisfying version 1.0 that actually lays the groundwork for the version 1.1 and 1.3 and 1.8 until you come up with a version 2.7 that's actually a really good piece, be it a movie, be it a email, a book, a, a coaching course, whatever that may be. So if I look back on all of my successes in life, creative successes, then it was only after that I've produced that, that crappy first time version of the product or content that I was able to go back and say, okay, I see five ways to improve it now. Let me go do that. And so it's, it's evolving. Like it's a living and breathing organism almost rather than just being a very solid binary thing of like either you create a best-selling piece or you don't. So, so a lot of artists that talk about, I remember think Picasso would talk about, well, you never really finish a painting. You just have to kind of let it go. You, you just have to kind of like move on to the next thing. So uh, did, you, did you sense that point of like, okay, I just need to get this out there and you just need to ship it as something like Seth Godin would say. Yes. At some point you get to a point where you realize unless I commit to some sort of version of this thing, I will never get it out. And so with my book, the problem for me with the most recent version that ended up on Amazon um, it was that it wasn't big enough. So my biggest insecurity about the book is that it's only 110 or so pages long. And I thought it's not good enough because all the books, again, I'm, I'm comparing this to all the masters that I'm kind of look up to, right? And so I'm looking at the other books and they're like 300 pages to 50, you know, closer to 400. There's like a lot of meat. And I'm like, ah, oh, my stuff is only 13 chapters. One of them is a big case study. And, you know, it's like, it's not enough. It's not enough. And, you know, after having this thing on my shelf for a couple of weeks, you know, I realized that I either have to cancel all the other projects and sit down for another two weeks or so to write what's left or I need to commit to it being whatever it is right now and ship it. Yeah. And that's what I've done. That that's what I've done. And again, incidentally, even after you do that, you still discover mistakes. For instance, the first um, uh, printing of the book uh, was missing the foreword. Uh, we forgot to put it in. I mean, it was mentioned on the cover, but it was missing. So we had to go back. But yes, I did have to accept the book as it was and then say, okay, I'll get back to it on the, you know, uh, the second edition of the book or I'll, I can release a sequel. But that was, that was my problem with it. Yeah. So take us back a little bit. How did you get into the world of email marketing? And in terms of where, where you see email marketing today, because we often hear like, well, really now it's all about becoming an Instagram star and about, you know, the, the, the social networks, email's kind of dead. Why, why should you even be focusing on email? So, Take us back a little bit first and then take us to where we are today. And is email even still relevant today? So when I started, uh, incidentally, there were talks of email dying because Facebook was, you know, on the rise and because Twitter was there and supposedly, you know, they're going to replace email. And I've heard the same thing about each and every single social media outlet, including Snapchat, including Periscope, everything. So the more, the more options we have for social media, the more the talks about email dying uh, kind of start uh, bringing you know, being brought up to the surface. I started out when um, instant messaging was really just becoming mainstream. 
where people went from calling each other to texting each other. When if you wanted to get to ask someone out, you didn't like call them and ask them out. You actually texted them and you were hoping for them to text you back and not just ignore you uh, for the next, uh, you know, seven to 14 days or so. And um, the way I stumbled into it was through actually network marketing where I got my start. I was very ambitious, but I was very broke. And um, I didn't have any business plans or funding or any business ideas. I definitely wasn't anywhere near close to manufacturing products. I couldn't, you know, figure any of that out. And I never ran my own business. I was still going to, um, it's like a community college, if you will, so like a military academy slash community college thing. And I said, you know what? I see where my friends are going. They're all going into this beaten path of go to school, get a degree, get a job. It's kind of like we, I was living in the matrix with all of them together. And, and at some point after I read Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad, Poor Dad, it's like he slipped me the red pill. And all of a sudden, everything changes, right? It's like I'm putting a different, gla- you know, different set of glasses and I'm seeing things completely differently. And I see how this path is just bad. And it's never going to lead to any sort of financial success or, th- or thriving of any kind. And so I, I, at the end of the book, Robert Kiyosaki says, well, if you don't have money and you don't have connections and you don't have skills and you don't have this and this, uh, then you should do MLM. You should do network marketing. And so that's exactly what I've done. But with the key difference that I didn't go and join Mway because I was living in Israel at the time. So we didn't really have an Mway um, division. Although my mom did uh, Herbalife for a while. I just didn't know what it was. Um, I went online because I was heavy into gaming and I started looking for MLMs online. And so I find this is this obscure little MLM still exists today. It's called Global Domains International, a GDI. And what they do, they say, look, the, the internet is revolutionizing the planet. It's revolutionizing everything we do. So you better get yourself a website and everybody will need a website at one point or another. So you might as well get people to join GDI have them get, get a website and a hosting account and a, like a really simple WYSIWYG, like what you see is what you get, website editor and an email address with a WS extension. And, um, you know, you get paid a dollar for every person you bring in. Now, to make a long story short, I failed miserably in MLM for a long time. However, what I learned is that um, it, the people who were really thriving were the ones who had an audience of some kind, and they would usually be able to easily tap into that audience, even if things changed. For instance, a, a very common thing in MLM is for you to build a team in one organization and then for something to happen that company. For example, the FTC would come in and shut them down or uh, you know, the product, the commission structure would change or something would happen. And so what a lot of, uh, what many leaders would do, they would basically email their people and say, hey, I'm changing companies, this company is bad, I'm going here. And they would just send them to a link of some kind, bam. Overnight, they've got 4,000 members in their downline, they're making thousands of dollars, there's a huge success story. So I, tra- I, I tracked back their success to having an audience And that's where email came in. Email was the best way and still is the best way uh, to build an audience. So we have today, you know, the the email, I I always think, you know, the email is interesting because it's like a stepping off point about building a relationship. Because if you have the email, then it opens up a whole bunch of other things in terms of whether you you decide to want to kind of uh, in those introductory, we'll talk about email sequences in a minute, but in those kind of introductory emails, kind of bouncing people around a little bit so they can, uh, you know, they also know that you're on Facebook and uh, you know other other places, and also with uh, custom audiences and retargeting audiences, and, and you can use that email to start almost like building these audiences in other places. And then it's amazing now you can actually just t- say, you know, I've got this ten thousand emails of my clients or my audience. Go and find me ten million more, <laughs> just like them, please. And so it's, it's incredibly powerful, but you, it kind of has to start having that email address. Um, so, so talk to just now, you know, a lot of our audience here, are maybe they're, they're speakers, they're authors, they're, they're, they're coaches. Um, and, and I saw coming into the world of speaking, I saw a lot of speakers who are very good at the sales piece, but not so strong at the marketing. So often they would have, they might have actually, you know, they might be doing, you know, six, seven figure, uh, revenues as a speaker, but, uh, it could go away overnight because they had no 
core. They, they often were, they had a gatekeeper, maybe it was a speaker bureau, for example, in, in the way. So talk to us about how you start thinking about building an, an email list. Now we think, okay, well, it's important to, to have an email list, to have that direct relationship with my, my customer or my audience. How do we even start going ahead? Because it feels like it could be, you know, quite a complicated thing. And, and why would someone even give an email address now? Well, uh, email is a price that you would have them pay for it to transact with you for something. And usually that's either a bribe. I call them ethical bribes. A great example of this is a webinar. For instance, if you're a speaker and you are, for example, like me, and you maybe, maybe you don't like traveling. I mean, you just shared with me that you've traveled like 20 countries in 60 days, which is not, I mean, to me, that's just nuts. I'm, I'm such a, I'm, I'm this, the, the place you see right now, this is where I spend most of my time. It's not right for so, everyone. It's not right. It's definitely not right for everyone. Yes, yes, absolutely. So let's just say you're a speaker and you've been doing this for 20 years and you're like, I'm really, I'm ready to maybe do f- fewer speaking engagements, but I want to get paid more, right? And so I want to build my own audience, right? I want to I wanna have more control over my business and not depend so much on other people's uh, seminars and other people's speaking opportunities. So and a, a really easy way for you to build an audience and to, for you to build a list and still use your speaking skills is to build what we call a webinar funnel, where you still give your speech, you just give it, in a, in a form of an online presentation rather than a physical presentation. Uh, oftentimes, you don't even have to show yourself on a webcam or anything like that. You can do it from behind the screen. So you literally do it in your underwear if you really want to. I mean, that's, that's most of my webinars. You know, underwear, no t-shirt, just perfect. I'm, I'm in my element, you know. And you, you basically deliver the same thing over the internet and the way they transact with you is they share their email in order to sign up for the webinar because you need to email them the sign up link. Now, when it comes to uh, webinar funnels, you can also ask for a phone number and you can text message people and then you can have your you know, sales team proceed to close more sales in the back end. That's more of an advanced way of doing it, but email is really just um, the payment that a user on the internet is typically using to engage with you for the first time. Now, there's really two types of email though. There's the prospect email. So if somebody signs up for your free webinar, they're a prospect email address on your list. But there's also a buyer email address. For instance, uh, my book, we're going to turn that into a book funnel, which means I will be offering the book for free in exchange for uh, the customer actually just uh, uh, paying for shipping and handling. So I'm going to ship them the book. The cost of the book is free. And they just cover shipping and handling. That's what we call a book offer or a book funnel. And so anytime I'm going to have someone get a free book, I'll have their credit card information for the shipping cost. And therefore now they become a buyer lead on my email list. And so those are obviously the highest quality leads you can ever wish to have because um, you have their credit card and their email. So now to move them to the next purchase is uh, about 10 times easier compared to a brand new person on your list. Because they already trust you because they bought something, you've given them value, they've shown that there's been a value exchange. Here. So that, that, like the book funnel is that's very similar to what someone like a Brandon Bouchard would do, where you would go from, you know, uh, it might be a free thing uh, initially into maybe a free copy of the book with a two, what we call two step, as you'd say, where email in first, the second page is we put the credit card details in, you just pay this free book, but you just pay the postage of packaging that covers the cost of any advertising. Then immediately from there, well, that alone won't cost that, that alone won't cover the cost of advertising. That's why if you ever see a book funnel by Dean Graziosi, by Brendan Bouchard, by Russell Brunson, Tony Robbins, I mean, the list goes on and on. You will also notice that immediately, as soon as you pick up the book, you're being upsold into several other offers. So that's something that's, 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 like, that's like the self liquidate or something called a self liquidating offer or the one, the one time offer. So it's like a really quick. So once people have gone through that you know the the, the free book giving email address maybe uh, paying postage and packaging a percentage a certain percentage will buy the the the, the low very low cost offer maybe an online course for example so you then you essentially you're building your list for free uh, on that yes and if you're really good you can do it at a profit and uh, you can do the same thing with the webinar which is what we're doing right now and I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of people don't bother getting good at marketing because if we break down what like the whole process of running your business is there's the sales part 
right? That's one of it, one of those parts. After the sales part comes the delivery of your service. But before the sales part, there's the marketing part, which is the conversation that happens between, between you and your customer all the way up until the point when you're asking for the money. That's what marketing is. And so that is very, very expensive. You know, getting somebody to pay attention to you in a very crowded space and very fragmented marketplace today um, is really expensive. And that's, that's where most people uh, struggle a lot. Now, incidentally, list building or growing your email audience is something that helps recoup a lot of that money way faster and makes the cost of advertising way lower because rather than sending people directly to your offer and hoping that they will buy right away, which most will never do. In fact, it's at this point in time, you know, there's an old saying, it's like you need at least seven exposures to an offer. I think that's been the myth, but that's no longer the case. That was true back in the 1940s. Right now, you need at least 33 exposures to an offer before you say yes. So that's why putting them on your list first and then following up with them is always going to be hundreds of times more profitable than direct linking to your offer. Yeah, I'm always amazed uh, when I see uh, reports coming some, sometimes from my team and people will be converting. They've never bought anything for maybe a, a, a year. They've joined the email list a year or even two years ago. And suddenly the first thing that they buy is not even a, like a $27 thing, like a small pricing. It's suddenly like a $5,000 thing. I'm like, but, be, but then you track back and you watch the open rates for the emails in that, the course of their, the time that they've been with you. And you see them opening, you see them opening all the time. So that kind of brings me to the, the, the next thing where I see a lot of uh, people that start building a list, they might be doing some of the things you're talking about. Maybe they do a webinars, they bring people into the list and then they don't do anything. <laughs> They're bringing in that list. So, and, and I think some of it's, and I, I understand it because some of it's a little bit of a fear like you don't, you want to be respectful for your audience. At the same time, you want to you know, ensure that you're giving stuff that's really of, of, of value to them as well. And I see that there's a real difference. I see some people, let's have a think about people like, um, and I'm trying to remember his name now. He, 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 uh, he's, I think he lives in Spain. I think he's a British guy. And he talks about the, the Seinfeld. Andrew Chevron. Yeah, Andrew Chevron, yeah. So it's like every single day and it's like opening and closing loops and his conversations and his emails. And it's just, it's really enjoyable, you know, to, to read and go through that. And then I look at other people who do more um, like a newsletter, like a weekly newsletter style, but, it, but equally it's really, it's really good. And you, you look forward to the, the, this kind of weekly newsletter coming in. But from your perspective of someone that's really looking to monetize that list is is there one that's better than the other that there's daily yes. thing, or is there better just sticking to the yes. news so there's definitely one that's better than the other and andre um let's let's not make any mistakes andrew chevron wants to monetize the list as well yeah. he just happens to be a really good writer and he understands like the loops and a lot of that complicated novel writing level uh stuff which i don't I mean, I read a few books on that, but I know enough to know that I'm not good at that. And I never attempt to be. Now, I can tell a short story or an anecdote, but it's never, I, I never leave them uh, like with an open loop by the end of my email. Most of my emails close the loops by the time we're done. And um, uh, what you mentioned is a Seinfeld email sequence. It's where one email is not connected to the next. What, where emails are connected, it's the soap opera sequence where you're basically building it in a way where you open a loop in email number one, you close that loop in email number four. And so you really have to almost uh, like plan out your sequence as a soap opera. Yeah. The strategy that I use that allows me to email my list every day, three times a day, mind you, not just even one time. Yes. Um, and by the way, I'll get to the frequency in a bit. Uh, but I use uh, uh, what we like to call an infotaining approach. This is a concept I learned from my friend Ben Settle, who's also a mutual friend of mine and Andre's as well. And uh, this approach allows you to mail every day and make the emails informative and enter entertaining at the same time. So I want you to think Dr. Phil, Oprah, any sort of uh, talk show where there's entertainment value in conversation, Howard Stern is a great example. Like he's an extreme though, but, but any radio show 
is typically a great example of what an infotaining email would look like. And, but you deliver it in tidbits, right? So these emails are less than 500 words long, usually between 150 to 350 words. And you always, you always link to an offer which is another big, 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 big mistake I see people make. You know, one time I was on a coaching call with this uh, VIP client of mine and she says, Igor, I've, I've built this list and I keep adding, you know, 20 subscribers a day. I've been emailing the list religiously, just like you told me for, you know, three weeks, but I'm not making sales. I'm like, that's very interesting. What are you, you know, how often do you pitch in your email? Like how often do you tell them, go find out more about my product here, link. And she says, um, Never. I, I mean, like, what do you mean? Why never? She says, well, because I want to give them value. And if they like me very much, they'll go look up my stuff. And I'm like, yeah, that's not going to happen. People are too busy or too lazy or both for that. So you get them dressed up, you get them excited, you give them something of value and then give them some, you know, somewhere to go. Give them a link, a, a product, a solution to the problem. Because, and this, is, and this is a huge paradigm shift for me at one point, in my journey, people do not get on your list just for fun. Typically, they get on your list because they've got a problem or problems that they really, really hope that you can help them solve. And another thing that people ignore is that we are a very uh, capitalistic society. I mean, most countries today, with a few exceptions, are very capitalist societies. Therefore, when we try to solve a problem, the first thing is we buy a solution. Even my daughter knows that. I mean, just the other day, and she's uh, six and a half, you know, um, I said, hey, uh, honey, we need to do, uh, we need to put up this, um, you know, thing on the wall. And she said, oh, okay, so why don't you call, you know, this uh, Nikolai, <laughs> so this guy who comes in and says, why don't you call Nikolai and have him come and do it? Like, even she understands that we need to call someone or, or give, some, give someone money for things to happen. So there's really no, there's really no shame in that. And the, if, if the only reason why you're not pitching your emails is because you're afraid to alienate people, you will quickly find out that you won't be doing any such thing. Yeah. Hey, funny, I, I am, my wife and I talk about this all the time. We, we have this kind of the 10% rule, regardless of where your list is, there's always 10% people that join your list who, for whatever reason can get, angry they'll they'll want to immediately unsubscribe they'll, they're just they're something and and the way I, I always think about you know that there's that expression your vibe attracts your tribe and if they don't like my vibe that's fine you know there's plenty of other vibes out there you go go and join another vibe and it's and it's you know people can can leave lists as well so you, you're you're messaging every single day i'm wondering if we take one step back how you plan out that are you thinking okay each week you're thinking about a different offer and then you're, you're doing the emails of the course that week for that particular offer or how, how are you, how are you kind of uh, strategizing these email sequences? So there's several approaches to this and it really depends on what you're selling. So let's take an example of somebody like Brendan Bouchard, which I'm assuming, you know, most people are familiar with. So Brendan has so many different offers that he can literally go and promote something else every week. And he can build what I call ticking time bomb campaigns where the campaign starts on a Monday or any other day of the week and has a very clear end date to which it's ticking down. And once it's get, getting to that date, the offer's gone, right? So it could be if he's launching a new course, then it's an introductory offer, 48, 48 hours only, 50% off. You get it before this time, you get it 50%, then price doubles and you know the offer's still available, but the price is different now you pay more money. Now there's also another uh, approach and that is for example, for my um, email marketing agency where we have an ongoing service and that service doesn't go away necessarily anywhere. It's like the same offer that, you know, the offer it, that it is today is the same as it has been a year ago. So it allows me to write these Seinfeld emails that are not necessarily connected to each other, but every day, I would send people to that website, encouraging them to sign up. And the funny part is, is that um, uh, last year I had this lady, she emailed me and she said, Igor, I've been on your list for eight months. And this last email you sent, it finally got me. Yeah. I'm, I'm signing up. You know, so she's been reading emails and seeing that offer for eight months before she finally uh, signed up. So it really depends on what you're selling. If, you are a speaker or information marketer, 
and you've got uh, uh, this coaching program, for instance, right? Let's just say you got a high ticket, 5,000 one-on-one coaching program. Then I would assume there's a natural scarcity that comes with it because you can only handle so many one-on-one clients at a time. So you can easily limit the number of people you take in and therefore limit the number of emails you really need to send out every now and again. So you can schedule them like once every three months, once every month, once every two months, and you can email the list for a week, inviting them to the coaching program and then say, oh, it's, you know, registration closed for now. Because uh, I've done this with my list building program where I've had, I built lists for people. And I said, I can only handle 12 people at a time. So I would send out 72 hour campaigns. Oftentimes it would be the exact same campaign, only resent later. And I would get my 12 and I would shut it down. And so with the list, you can really play it any way you wish. It can fit any schedule, even if you're a very busy speaker and you don't have the time to sit down and plan out your Oprah sequences, et cetera, you can still email once a day. Uh, you can write your emails from the airport, from, you know, I, I done, I've done a lot of writing on the plane when I used to travel a lot. It's actually one of the, my favorite places to write. It's the plane because you, you can't you're not be distracted disturbed. by anything. <laughs> you can't exactly. Be- so you can basically on your plane uh, ride from Texas to Los Angeles, right? You can pump out five, seven emails in one go, have an assistant load them into your software and schedule them once a day at 7 a.m. or 9 a.m. in the morning or you know noon or whatever, and they're going out. And so even while you're speaking or vacationing, your emails are working for you, right? Yeah. These are like actual salespeople going out there recruiting customers. So in terms of the, the, the daily emails you're sending out, are you always push, uh, you know, sending people to maybe your, your core offer, the, the main offer? Um, or I've seen people like, the, you know, the Ryan Dices of this world that will often do, uh, he might call it, uh, I can't remember what the name is, in terms of his ascension way of ascension, ascending people. It might be a, a lower price thing in order to then eventually get you into that. So he's always actually promoting either a, a free webinar, for example, or a low price thing. Um, it, but he, he, oft, he doesn't really often directly promote the core offer that he's trying to, to sell. Um, and I, the reason I ask that, because I've tried the, the, the different approaches and I just found my head kind of exploded after a while when I was having to think about all these different Ascension things. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to just like stream, cut it way, way back and just focus on, on a core thing. But I know other people have had a huge success with that ascension model. And it's just, uh, I wonder what your thoughts are. Well, uh, Ryan Dice has a huge team, right? So it, he's not writing his emails. He doesn't need to think about that. He's got people doing that for him now. They're a big company and four business partners. Uh, so I don't do it that way, no. Um, to build an ascension funnel, uh, it, last time I did it, took me about eight months because you have to build from the very low to the very high. And then once you've got the funnel set up with four, five, six different offers going from as little as seven bucks all the way up to, you know, 17 grand, you then need to start split testing your front end offers and you start creating new front, you know, cheap front end offers along the way. So no, I don't do it that way. My product line is actually not that rich. And I also don't always like these days, you won't find me selling anything for seven bucks. Uh, What you would find me do more is webinars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot more webinars because on the webinar, I get to kill two birds with one stone. First off, it's a great excuse to email your list. Let's face it, emailing your list with, hey, I'm hosting this free training tonight, uh, as opposed to, hey, buy my stuff here, is is just a good, you know, feels better. You're feeling giving more value in that way. Yeah, yeah. So less guilt, less guilt with the the free stuff. And Mm -hmm. on the training, what I get is I get to control the environment in which uh, the audience is perceiving me and they're engaged with me. I can, you know, call them out. I can answer their questions. So it's a lot more personal and it's a lot more valuable to them as an interaction, as opposed to watching my VSL, which has a place to be, but still webinars are more effective to, especially to convert, especially in the front end. So if I'm getting on the webinar now, I'm not selling for seven bucks. I mean, that would be a waste of my time. So I'm selling for 497, 197, 997, right? I never go be, beyond like 1497 mm-hmm. on a webinar. Um, anything beyond that, it requires a phone call. I mean, there's really no way around it or in person. So 
Um, just like a speaker who's engaging the audience is going to be very effective, I will be very effective as a speaker on a webinar engaging my digital audience. And so as opposed to sending 100 people to a, let's say a long form sales letter selling a product for $97, I can, and achieving about, I don't know, what's an average, maybe one or 2% conversion rate, I can send, I can get 100 people in a room in a webinar and I can achieve a 10% conversion on a 997, which is way more money way more leverage, you get better customers too, because they, they're now jumping through all these hoops to be with you. So overall, just a better business model uh, as far as I'm concerned. Fantastic. So, so it's great the, the way you've kind of laid it out. And, and I'm sure anyone watching this is going to want to come and join your list now just to see how this, this unfolds, as well, to, get, to get that experience so they can see it. Well, how, does that, how can I take some of these things and apply it to, to my business, whatever that, that business may be? Let's talk, as we start to finish up here, I'd love to know about um, tools because uh, often it's a thing that people get, get worried about, a question I get asked a lot where people, they, they think you have to build some kind of fancy CRM you know, to get started and doing kind of email sequences. If, if you were recommending some really uh, simple tools in order to just get started in building your list, what, what, what would those tools be? Right. So it's actually way easier today than it used to be when I got started because uh, today you've got tools like ClickFunnels and Kartra that include pretty much everything you will ever need under one roof. So between the two, my preference is Kartra uh, because it's been created by, um, by Andy Jenkins and Frank Kern. So these guys are really smart marketers. Not to say that Russell Brunson, the founder of ClickFunnels, isn't. It's just my preference between the two is Kartra. But you can also use ClickFunnels, uh, very easy to use, and they've got a ton of material. And I mean, get ready to be upsold like crazy, but you know, they've got a ton of stuff for you to, to check out. And what these tools do, they allow you to create your own list building funnel in a very easy drag and drop fashion that's fairly easy to, uh, to figure out. So to me, and I was actually just shooting a, a training video for my coaching clients together live, um, I signed up to a Kartra account and I was done setting up the essentials of my sales funnel within roughly uh, 90 minutes or so, never having used the software before. So that's a really, a really good tool to use. Now, if you want to do webinars, then there's really uh, two options you're facing. Either go to webinar or webinar jam. My preference, once again, is webinar jam because it's been also created by the same people that created yeah. Kartra and it's designed so you can do a one webinar, you can actually do one live webinar, but then you can, with a push of a button, just like that, turn it into an evergreen webinar that feels like a live one, but it's actually not. So instead of you doing a live webinar, like twice a week, every week from now and until the day you die, you can actually have that webinar working for you 24 seven. So if you ever heard the, uh, if you ever uh, like the idea of making money while you sleep or while you're away somewhere, you know, it's the automated webinar and your email list that really help you make it happen. I think, I think web webinars are, are phenomenal because they give, they give it a huge amounts of value. And they're also, as you said, they sit really nicely. If you do have a product around, you know, $200 to $1,500, they sit really nice to be able to sell it. Cause you need that little bit of longer and, Obviously, in this call, we don't have a chance to talk about webinars, how like structuring webinars, because that's a, another thing entirely. So, so great. So, Cartra, we'll put a link there for everyone to go and check that out. What about a book? If you'd recommend one book, not not one of your own, your own book, but a book by another author, it could be on email marketing, but actually, it could, maybe it could just be around mindset, getting your heads into the space about thinking about the possibilities and where the future of marketing is going. What book would that be? There's only one person who I recommend wholeheartedly with pretty much no holds barred. Anything they put out, as far as I'm concerned, is marketing Bible to me, and that's Dan Kennedy. Dan Kennedy, uh, he's basically the person behind all the Brendan Bouchards and the Frank Kearns and the Ryan Dices and Matt Basex of the world. And, um, you know, he talks a lot about offline marketing. But he is the one who talks about list building in that context as well. Um, I would say he, if you track back everything we're doing today as an industry, you will see a lot of that originating back in the 
early and mid 1900s. And Dan Kennedy, uh, one of the things that I absolutely love about him is he's so pragmatic that he never puts up uh, puts out a book just to make people feel good, but he always puts up material that just works. So um, I can track more dollars, you know, in my business over the last uh, almost 11 years now to Dan Kennedy than to any other guru. And trust me, I spend nearly 50 grand a year on coaching and, uh, you know, private masterminds and things of that nature. And uh, by far and away, Dan Kennedy pens down like not even a contest. Fantastic. And if there was a book for someone that hasn't read any Dan Kennedy stuff before, is there one book that maybe should get started with? It's a good, good primer, good introductory book. Yes. Uh, so I would recommend getting started with no BS uh, direct marketing. Uh, I think it's called the kick butt guide to it. It's basically with the red cover. Uh, okay. It's black and, and red cover. Uh, but all of his books are great. And what you'll find is that a lot of them sort of um, correlate with each other. So maybe 30% of the content is always the same. And he hammers those important points home. So you can't just, there's no way you can read three Dan Kennedy books. And he's got like dozens of them and not walk away knowing exactly what to do in your business. It's just impossible. Fantastic. We'll put that link there as well. Um, and uh, if you were to recommend one album, one record, I'm looking at some of those posters behind you i'm seeing i see some sports and i can't see any any music ones but if you were to recommend one piece of music one album one record to our listeners what would that be hmm. that's a really good question so I'm, I'm just coming off of a queen concert that just been here in toronto with uh adam lambert but um it's it's not a great it's not a great fit for for marketing as far as i'm concerned building my business and um just uh kind of looking over the journey in general I would say it's, uh, there's two songs that come to mind. Maybe not albums, but songs. The first one is by ACDC. And it's, uh, it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. So it's basically a song that tells the journey of like, if you want to become a rock and roll uh, singer, rock and roll star, of what you have to be willing to take uh, in a very interesting rock and rollish way. And the other one is by Nickelback, my, uh, by far my favorite band. Um, it's called, uh, rock star as well. And basically it's, it's more about, it's, it's like an exercise in writing copy. It reflects the desires and the dreams that I've had growing up so much that every word resonates. And it's just a constant reminder that, if you talk about the things that people want to know or pe that bother people or that people think about all the time, you will always be interesting and relevant to them. Meaning that if you ever have any trouble coming up with things to say to your audience, be it if you're a speaker or a coach, the first thing to go, the first place to go is either their dreams or their fears or their suspicions. Like these three places You'll never be boring to them. You'll always be interesting and they'll always be hanging on your every word. And actually, as you mentioned this, where I'm filming this from today, I'm five miles away from the birthplace of Bond Scott from ACDC. So there's actually a statue not about five miles from where I'm, I'm filming this today. Um, final question uh, for you, Igor. Let's, I want you to imagine you woke up tomorrow morning and you have to start from scratch. So you have all the tools, all the, the, all the knowledge you've acquired over the years, but no one knows you, you have no one, and you have no list. What would you do? How would you restart things? I would build a webinar funnel selling a fairly uh, low priced course somewhere between 197 and 497 with an unconditional money back guarantee. That course would be within a passionate niche market that I myself have passion towards. It could be a, a self-help or communication market. It could be make money online. It could be dating. Uh, it could be um, uh, financial or investment market, any of the big markets, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I would basically drive as much paid traffic as I could to that funnel to get some proof that it's converting. And then I would turn around, I would go to the biggest players in the, in the niche, and I would beg and plead them to promote me in exchange for 100% commission. I would actually give them all the money. 100. So and the reason I would do why, that. So that's, that's that, giving them 100% of the money. Why would you do that? 
I would do that because they would be sending me customers and anytime uh, they would be making a conversion on my webinar and uh, uh, getting me a, say, $497 buyer, from that point forward, I have a list of $497 buyers. Like I can literally come out and say, um, I'm offering one-on-one -on -one consulting for $500 an hour. This is what I can teach you. And here's packages of one hour, three hours, or 10 hours at a discount. I would literally be making six figures immediately, right away, because I've had a list. And the only way you get people to promote you if you have no street cred, if you don't really have a big reputation, uh, oftentimes requires you just to give up a lot of that money up front. I actually have done that. I've done that before, only not with a webinar funnel, but with a, with a different funnel when I was just getting started. I've had actually a funnel made of three products. They're all low ticket, but three products, and I gave away 100% commission on all of them. So I had 10 people who I was able to get to agree to promote me, and they built me a buyer list. Within a month, I've had about 100, 150 people on my buyer list. That buyer list made me six figures that wow. year. So it's no, the biggest yeah, it's, 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 it's getting a right quality list as well. Um, uh, thank you so much for coming on today. It's been a really fascinating learning about the, the ins and outs of email marketing. And actually you have it talking about taking things even further. You've got a very, very kind offer for everyone um, about your book. So tell everyone what that's about. I'm going to have a link here below so they can go and check that out. Yes. So uh, uh, I invite you to check out my book. It's called The Lisbon Lifestyle Confessions of an Email Millionaire. Right now, uh, if you've got Amazon Prime membership, I believe you can get it for free because you get the Kindle Unlimited library. So it's a part of that. Or you can get a physical version on Amazon for just seven bucks. It's really nothing. And uh, you can go to igorsbook.com to find out more about that. It's going to take you straight to Amazon. You're not going to get on my list, unfortunately, but well, I'm working on that. So, you know, don't worry. But if you do want to get on my list and want to see, you want to see a proper webinar funnel in action, then you can simply head over to igor.ac, igor.ac, and you will land on a page that invites you to a free webinar about uh, affiliate marketing. Now, whether you know anything about that doesn't matter, but you can play prospect and you can opt in and you know check things out, see how it's structured, and uh, you know recognize that it's not rocket science. You don't need to be a speaker with 500 speaking hours behind your belt. Anyone can do it. And even if you, especially if you don't have a street cred right now, that you should do it because a webinar automatically elevates you above the noise of the marketplace. Fantastic. So we're going to put all those links there for everyone. Igor, thank you so much for coming on today uh, and sharing all about your creative life. And I wish you great success with the book and everything you're doing next. If you're interested in living a more creative life, then I'd love to invite you to join me as I share some of the most successful strategies and techniques that high performing creatives use. I put them all together in a free downloadable ebook that you can get by going to jamestaylor.me. That's jamestaylor.me to get your free downloadable ebook on creativity.